or around the world. Uh, does that imply of an of a of a teacher who went around the world and spread it to different cultures, or does it just simply say uh, to to you that th- these tribes in some way were in communication or or in contact? What what's what do you suggest? Well, if you go far enough back in the tradition and each in any single culture, you'll find references that that claim that they were taught this, specifically taught this cosmological tradition as part of a, a civilizing plan. And the idea was that as they learned the elements of the cosmology, each each phase of it was associated with a civilizing skill, such as the ability to weave a cloth or to plow a field or to uh, to plan an agriculture. Um, and culture after culture, if you go back far enough, they all eventually say that, yes, we were taught to be civilized by someone. Um, many times that someone is originally revered in the tradition and then later on somewhere uh, in the middle of the, I would say the 1500 BC, uh, the teacher becomes vilified and the tradition becomes vilified. Hmm. Why is that, do you think? Uh, it looks to me as if, <laughs> it looks to me as if um, the group that originally arranged the the civilizing tradition had done so uh, in delegation from another from a larger group, and they had been uh, forbidden from specifically forbidden from giving us deep science, and that at a later point, whoever delegated them realized that they had based the trend the tradition on on science. Uh, imagine if you have a child who's two years old and they are asking pertinent questions about where babies come from. Mm. Now, you might not want to tell them as a parent the full story of where babies come from, but whatever little story you do make up to tell them, and a thinking parent will base that on real fact. You won't just tell them the outright line. It, most parents won't say, well, the stork brings a baby. Right. They'll say there are, there's an aspect of the father that comes together with a, the aspect of the mother and creates the baby. Kind of a metaphor uh, or an, a story, a veiled story. Right, and so it looks to me as if these original teachers um, decided that if they were going to provide us with a creation tradi- tradition, that it didn't make sense not to base it on real science, even though they had been told not to base it on science. And so they came up with the idea of the esoteric tradition. A uh, tradition in, in the Dogen, the way that it plays out with the Dogen is that any tribe's person can l- learn the innermost details of the tradition if they want to, but the student has to pursue it. And the rule is that if I, as a, an individual, ask a Dogen priest a leading question about the cosmology, as long as the priest agrees that my question is in keeping with my status as an initiate, um, they have to answer truthfully. Hmm. But if my the question is out of order with my you know, if I'm a beginning initiate and I'm asking a, a very uh, question. So we were talking about the esoteric tradition. Yes. And um, how the way it is designed uh, would tend to prevent um, a stranger who came upon the scene from ever discovering any of the innermost details of that tradition. You really need to, to study it for a very long period of time before you learn the details. Um, so my sense is that the tradition was originally based on science and a very carefully based on science. It's a very interesting structure um, that a single set of symbols, a, th- a single set of, co- of mythological themes are used to simultaneously describe creation in terms of the formation of matter and the formation of the universe and the... Um, progression, biological pro- progression as uh, as a child is um, born, mm-hmm. how an egg proceeds to become a baby. Um, so now the the exciting thing about the Dogen is that they've retained a very clear sense of what each symbol means and of what each word means. As a matter of fact, they place a very high value on purity of language. Um, one odd thing about the Dogen is that if you look at them as a whole, their, their culture as a whole, their language is made up of, of 
15 or 20 sub-languages and there's, uh, that may have been bothered, borrowed from other cultures, but the, the sub-language or the group of words that pertain to cosmology all seem to be ancient Egyptian words. Really? And the way we know that, the way that we know that is that each word carries at least two levels of definition, and these definitions are what I call, there's a logical disconnect between the definitions such that you can't guess the second one by knowing the first one. I'll give you an example that the um, the creator god of the Dogon is named Ama, and he's a likely counterpart to Amen in Egypt. And the name means hidden god, but it also can mean to grasp, to hold firm, or to establish. So I was reading a, an online article one time where an, an author was was stating that the Hebrew word amen could not be re related to the Egyptian word amen. You know, the Hebrew amen that comes at the end of a prayer could not mm -hmm. be related to the Egyptian god amen okay. because the Hebrew word came from a root that means to establish. Hmm. So I, uh, I thought that was funny because uh, the author clearly didn't understand that there are two levels of meaning here and he, he just invalidated his own point by making it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is interesting because that means that in some cases that maybe because you mentioned the the, the connection here with Jewish uh, traditions and, and 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 maybe stories as well. Th does that mean that we have a, a similar creation story from the Dogon as we can find in in uh, in Genesis? Is is that what you're saying as well here? Yes, except that the Genesis story seems to be a very watered down version that I associate with whatever group tried to. Um, to disavow the original teaching, not associated with the group that originally taught. Mm. And what you find is that around 1500 BC, um, symbols and characters that originally were very carefully designed to carry a particular meaning suddenly all get changed. Uh, letters get turned upside down or are changed in form. Um, uh, glyphs and characters change so that they no, no longer retain the meaning that they originally had. They get disconnected from their original meanings. And do you think that that was a, a conscious plan to kind of confuse things, or, or why did that happen? Well, if you recall the story of Adam, of Adam and Eve and the uh, the serpent, the serpent is the, is the creature that's associated with the ancient teachers in culture after culture, if you go back far enough, um, you always have this, the image of a serpent associated with these teachers. Yeah. Now, the, from the modern perspective, the transgression that the serpent uh, committed was to have provided a level of knowledge he wasn't supposed to have provided. Hmm. That Eve's mistake was that she um, encouraged Adam to partake of that knowledge. Hmm. Um, that's There are stories like that around the world. Um where the, the the priests who are knowledgeable see a turning point having happened where the original tradition gets uh, deliberately circumvented. Yeah. yeah. Distorted in a, in a way. Right. So, that, I mean, that, it's incredibly interesting. And, and in terms of uh, uh, the Dogon, would you say that that's, again, then, that's more closer to an, an original and, and correct uh, interpretation uh, or even scientific explanation for the creation of, of even the universe and, and life on this planet? Does it go into depths, uh, so to speak, in, in terms of where we come from and how we came about to, to be, for instance, human beings? Yes, um, the Dogen say, the Dogen priests say, that one purpose of their cosmology is to explain how their tribal god created matter. And they start with discussions of of a structure that's very similar to an atom. And they say that it's composed of structures that are very similar to electrons, protons, and neutrons. And when I got that far in my studies, and I didn't know very much about um, astrophysics, but I knew that they had these two definitions right, the definition of the atom and of the components of the atom. And so I asked myself, what are the chances that they also have the remainder of the structure right as you descend down from there? And I began to educate myself with popular 
what texts on uh, astrophysics written by Stephen Hawking and Brian Greene and people like that. And what I found was agreement with the Dogen point by point 